Good morning, everyone. My name is Erika Horiba. I'm a vocational guidance officer working for the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare of Japan. First of all, I appreciate being given the opportunity to come here to speak to you. Thanks to everyone, I can really enjoy diversity of public employment services in many countries. Today, I will introduce new challenge for opening data as online service. This is a very recent service because it has just started from this September. Under the current movement in data era, according to the social needs, we started this new business. First, outline of the labor market and the PES in Japan. Labor force participation rate is 17.6%. Total labor population is 66 million. Of them, the population of workers is 63 million. The unemployed is 2.7 million. Unemployment rate is 4%, and number of enterprises covered by employment insurance benefit is 2 million. Next, uh, activities of PES. PES of Japan provides three main services based on ILO Convention number 88. The three services are job placement, employment insurance benefit, and employment measures. As you know, ILO Convention number 88 states that PES organizations should provide these three services by PES office staff as nationwide services. We ratified ILO Convention number 88 in 1953. Since this time, for more than 60 years, we had been managing PES based on this scheme. The main point of this scheme is that the three services should be integrated so that PES office staff, employers, and job seekers can act efficiently. Next, PES organization. We are the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, and below that, we have the 47 labor bureaus in each prefecture, and below that, we have the 544 PES offices. The Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare gives a nationwide direction to PES offices through labor bureaus, and we also absorb the unique ideas and best practices from PES offices through labor bureaus. Thanks to an internet system and the human resource rotation practices, we introduce the flexibility in these structures, and they make PES more practical. We believe that the practical activities consist of two elements, a first, uniformity. PES should be provided speedily and nationwide. Second, localization. PES should be modified according to the local market needs. Next. Main result in 2013 fiscal year. Number of job seekers is 6.2 million, and number of job openings for permanent employees is 8.5 million. And number of job finders is 1.9 million, and number of recipients of employment insurance benefit is 1.6 million. As for the PES result, I will briefly explain about a notoriety fact shown by the survey conducted in last year. I appreciate the cooperation of 10 countries with this survey. The countries are Norway, Germany, Australia, Bulgaria, Portugal, Moldova, Armenia, Argentina, UK, and Australia. Thank you very much. This graph shows that the total number of job openings that employers offer to PES office in 2012, the number of job openings widely across the sample. <coughs> Without considering labor force size and the conditions in each country, it's difficult to assess whether the number of each country is actually different or not. But at least I can say that the PES in Japan deals with a much larger number of job openings and job seekers. Next, I'd like to show how a PES are close to the people. You can find a lot of unique characters on this screen and these characters are created by PES office staff voluntarily. Some of them represent the local industry and product. In addition, PES office has a nickname called Hello Work. I know it sounds strange for native English speakers, but, but for Japanese, Hello Work gives a casual image. Next topic, current employment trend in data era. <coughs> IT at PES is operated by dual system, by an internet system and the internet on website. The main point of the past IT service is they had been utilized mainly for PES office users. First, when employers submit job offers, there are two ways, by visiting PES offices directly or on website. Since PES office staff 
value the face-to-face -face communication with employers rather than contact through internet. Visiting PES offices directly is more popular than on website. Next, job seekers use both website and internet system to seek job. On the website, the average number of access per day is about 450,000. At 4 PES office, when staff introduce job offer to job seekers, they confirm record on the internet system screen. Through that screen, all PES staff can share communication history between each staff and each employer and each staff and job seekers. Next, this is a new challenge of online service. Compared with the past scheme, online service involves employment placement businesses and their clients as well as PES office users. Employment placement businesses provide job information and job services. They consist of local government, vocational training institute, labor, uh, sorry, a private sector job placement agency, and the school as a employment service providers. Now, about 1,000 employment placement businesses participate in the new service. The new point of this scheme is that PES office provides job information data to employment placement businesses directly. One of the advantages about online service is PES encourages employment placement businesses to promote their own job placement project by providing PES data. Of course, uh, before providing job information to PES, uh, sorry, job information to employment placement businesses, PES office staff must explain the new service for employers who submit job offers to PES offices. The only information that the employers agree with the online service is provided to employment placement businesses. I will explain why we started this new business. There are mainly two reasons. But first, local government request PES to provide job information data online directly. Originally, they provide social benefit for those who are struggling to make a living. In 2013, the law of promoting support system for social benefit recipients has enacted, and the law encouraged local government to promote job placement services for social benefit recipients so much. So need for job information from PES and much more cooperation with PES has increased. Second, in social trend of big data, Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare naturally discussed that we should promote utilization of public data as open data. So what is open data? It's not merely picking up data as it is. It's a data format that are suitable for machine reading such as CSV, API, CSV means a comma separated values, and API is application program interface. Data should be <coughs> released with the rules of secondary use. That means that the data users can process and analyze the data as users like without requiring lot of manpower and, man sorry, manpower. In this context, data provided by PES don't need to be fixed as one format that PES office users uh, sorry, PES office show to the public. Using data, employment placement businesses can edit job information as they like. I will touch upon later how employment placement businesses can and should edit the data, because regardless of the technical skills, employment placement businesses should follow some rules that PES decided. Open data is expected to bring three effects at the same time, first, data improve the transparency and reliability of their government. Second, data should facilitate public participation in the uh, private sector. Second, data should stimulate overall economy as well as efficiency of their government. Mm -hmm. Considering the general concept and the effect on open data, we set two main ideas before making policies. First, Data held by PES should be provided as open data. Second, PES should play a major role in them promoting the labor market. Third, in particular, PES should be collaborate with local government more closely than before. Then, going through the process of making policy, national policy are established. So, let's go to short recap. We change the view of data in past we think that the data should be used, used mainly passively as job information, 
and the PES should hold whole data carefully. From now, we got a new concept of open data, so data should be used in various ways for matching and data analysis. And under the law and the rules, local government and the private sector can use a part of PES data. Next topic, the making process of online service. When we establish a new service, we set two perspectives. First, deciding a successful strategy from the past experience and adding new essence regardless of their existing system. We need to focus on the target and apply the best practices for the new ideas, and we also try add new ideas and activities. First, when PES share on holding data, we discussed the two points. First, who needs employment services? Second, how to involve the other stakeholders? Besides PES, there are other stakeholders in the field of employment services. Private sector job placement agencies share 4% of the way that the job seekers find jobs. Advertisements share 27.4% of job offers. And others include personal connection and local government. Consequently, when we set the target of online service, we chose employment placement businesses such as private sector job placement agency and the local government, and we did not choose advertisement. I will explain about the decision making process. Needless to say, PES are highly responsible for introducing jobs. From the past experience, PES know that merely providing job information doesn't work well for job seekers who are really struggling to find jobs. We believe that PES should provide both job information and job placement so that job seekers can efficiently seek jobs. In particular, providing tailor-made services according to job seekers' wish and the condition works well. <clears throat> With the view from the past experience and best practices, we chose employment placement businesses, not advertisement, as the target of new service. Since employment placement businesses are take uh, uh, sorry, are uh, able to take responsibility for job placement like PES. On the other hand, advertisements are not appropriate because they do not introduce job offers and directly to job seekers. Let's go to the second question. How to involve other stakeholders? When starting online service, PES should show both advantages and responsibility for employment placement businesses. There are two advantages for them. First, uh, they can acquire new clients by increasing the chance to promote new job offers from employers in online service, and they can also improve the matching service for job seekers. Of course, it's clear that uh, the more people share job information, the more the labor market will be promoted. However, we should be reminded that just providing much information without efficient services leads mismatching in the labor market. So we need to make some rules so that employment placement businesses can take responsibility for using PES data. What are the responsibilities for employment placement businesses? First, regardless of online service, based on the law, employment placement businesses should follow the labor supply and demand adjustment system. In this system, employment placement businesses are divided into two types. White and one type is fee charging. It consists of mainly the private sector job placement agencies. They can get the fee from employers or sometimes job seekers when they introduce jobs. And they get a license of job placement from Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare by approval system. Now about 70,000 companies have this license. The other type is free type. It consists of schools, local government, special corporations, and others. They must provide employment services for free. They get a license of job placement from Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare by a notification system. Originally, employment placement businesses should follow the law and the rules of the labor supply and demand adjustment systems. Moreover, they also should follow the additional rules when using online service. For example, under the law, employment placement businesses should introduce job offer accepted by themselves. 
In other words, employment placement businesses must not introduce job offers accepted by others. We call it principle of job placement. If we ignore this principle, we are confused who are the responsible persons for this job placement. Based on this principle, after accepting data from PES offices, employment placement businesses are not allowed to use data as it is, nor to introduce offers accepted by PES to their clients. So how should employment placement businesses use data from PES offices? In order to show job offer to their clients, they have to negotiate with employers and ask them if employer can submit additional offer for employment placement businesses. If they succeed in negotiation, employment placement businesses can acquire new job offers and show them to their clients. Let's see the next example. Under the principle of clear indication of working condition, when employment placement businesses as well as PES introduce job offers, these working conditions should be shown clearly for job seekers. On this point, when employment placement businesses negotiate with employer to submit job offers, these job offers conditions should be clear. Moreover, in the online service, we set an ambitious rule that employment placement businesses should not make working condition worse than the original offer that the PES hold. That means if the original offer from PES offices is offer for regular workers, employment placement businesses should not get new job offer from the same employer as non-regular workers. They must get the job offers whose conditions are better than or at least the same as the original offer. Or they can also get a new job offer whose conditions are completely different from the original ones. In the online service, PES share the technical skill with local government. That is a new challenge for PES. First, PES <coughs> provide a basic lesson with the manuals. Though local government have a license of job placement, some of them are not so skillful in job placement as PES. So we provide a basic lesson with the manual and we got a lesson about the role, rules, and know-how of job placement. Second, PES provides software to read the data. After local government accept the data from PES offices, they have to transfer data to readable formats to show job seekers. However, some local governments cannot afford to develop software by themselves to read the data, so PES provides the software for free. This online service changed the relationship PES and employment placement businesses. Ten years ago, PES regarded employment placement businesses as competitors in the field of employment services. Now, PES have gotten to the point where they should take responsibility to manage matching system as a leader of local labor market. This concept is fully followed ILO Convention number 181. PES are no, not merely source of job information. Moreover, employment placement businesses are no more competitors for PES, so it doesn't matter which service job seekers and employers may take. The matter is, regardless of the employment service providers, whether or not job seeker can get a job and employer can find good applicant as soon as possible. In order to make them happy, we believe that PES must try new challenges as much as possible. Let's go to the short recap. From the successful strategy, we focus on the target and we decide the employment private businesses and their client is a target. And we also decide a way to provide the data Data should be provided with matching services. And we try a new challenge. We be believe that the PES should develop transparency as public services by responding to employment placement businesses need and by matching, managing, uh, sorry, managing matching rules as a leader of the local labor market. Thank you very much. <laughs>